Hey guys, Roman here from Tech Guides, and today I want to share with you my top 10 Bash RC tips to boost efficiency when working with Linux. Now, this Bash RC file essentially is executed whenever you're opening up a new shell, and essentially it contains a few convenient helper scripts that will make interacting with the Bash or with Linux much more convenient. Now, while there is quite a lot of things that you can actually do to your Bash RC file, um, I would like to talk about the top 10 things that are likely going to make a meaningful impact in regarding your productivity and efficiency when interacting with the shell. So this video I have actually organized in a way that number one or the first couple of uh, modifications to your Bash RC are going to be the most impactful and then going down in the list will get to some commands that will provide some nice added functionality to your Linux shell. However, that you likely won't be needing on a day by day basis. One last note before jumping right into the video, all of the different um, Bash RC um, commands that I'm showing in this video are obviously also available on my blog techguides.yt such that you can very conveniently copy paste them into your Bash RC file. Okay, so here we are on a pretty fresh install of Ubuntu 20.04 and essentially there is no modifications to the Bash RC file whatsoever. You can find it by simply doing cd to go to your home directory and then open it with nano for instance by typing nano.bashrc. Now the first thing I would recommend you to do is to add a new section in your Bash RC file such that you know that these uh, commands here are actually custom added commands and that are not already provided by the operating system. So let's add custom commands. And with that, we're ready for the first tip of today's video, which is to have a nice um, username and host representation and also the current folder that you're in, in your shell or rather at the start of your shell. To do this, uh, simply add this command here, save the file by pressing Ctrl C, um, Y and enter. And then you actually have to reload your bash RC file in order for the last changes to actually take effect. Um, you could also just open a new shell, um, but in this case, I'm just gonna show you another bonus tip here. You can just source the bash RC file. And as you can see, the login uh, or rather nickname server um, identifier here has changed. So now the username is in kind of green blue, um, followed by the server in green. And then if we were to actually go to some directory, you can see the directory in purple. So going back to the command, we can see that here we modify the username, followed by an at, followed by the host name, a colon, followed by the current directory. Now, if you want to change the colors that this is um, displayed in, then this is very simple. You can essentially just change these two numbers here. Now I will share a link in the description where you can look up what the different numbers actually represent. So which kind of colors they represent. And by that you can actually modify these colors to your heart's content. Now whilst we're on the topic of colors, um, we can also modify the type of colors that are displayed whenever listing a directory using the ls command. As you can see by default we have blue for folders, green for executables, white for any text file essentially, and red for archives. Now, I personally like to modify this a little bit using the Nord colors. Um, you can see them on screen right now. Essentially, this is just a very convenient uh, modifications to your LS colors to make them pop a little bit better. And to use this, you need to go to GitHub, click on the Dear Colors link here, click on Copy Raw File, go back to your terminal and add a new file called Dear colors, paste the content of that file, save it, go back into your bash RC file and paste the following string. What this will essentially do is it will just evaluate the dear colors and will use it whenever it actually displays um, directories. So here you can see how this actually works. We have a dedicated color for folders once again, one for um, archives. Uh, one for log files that might not be too interesting, any other files, and finally, Cyan is representative of files that are executable. Now, of course, you can also change these kinds of colors to your heart's content. You can go absolutely crazy with this. So here I'm really just showing you what's possible. The next command that I think you will use basically every day a million times is to actually change directories. 
And in order to simplify moving up in directory trees, you probably want to use these aliases. Now, an alias is essentially um, binds a certain command to some word. You can call them whatever you want, unless another program has already assigned this word to another command, then it won't work or will actually clash. Um, but essentially, you can do anything here. And what I have like to do is to actually bind the dot dot to cd dot dot because you'll use this very often. And then dot 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 going back two directories and then finally four dots in order to go back three directories. So in order to use this, once again, we'll have to source it. And now, as you can see, if I do dot dot, we go back one directory. If I do dot dot dot, we go back all the way to the root. And once again, four dots to go back three directories. By the way, here's an extra tip 3.1. And that is that you don't actually need an alias to go into your home directory. So say we're in the root here and we're going to go back to your home directory. We can just press CD just like that. And that's already an alias to actually jump into your home directory. Now, one more bonus tip if you actually want to go back where you've just came from, you can just type CD and then a dash and you will jump back to whichever directory you've been just before. Now, after changing directories, the next most frequent command you'll probably issue in Linux is to list the directory's content. Um, and in order to actually simplify these listing of content, I also like to use a couple of aliases. So the first one here is LL, which is shorthand for ls-l. This essentially lists the content of the directory in a list. It's kind of ironic that it doesn't do that in the first place. But anyways, as you can see here, we get a little bit more information on who owns a file, when it has been last modified, what the uh, mod is. So if you can execute it, if you can read it, if you can write it. The next alias was LA, which stands for LS-LA. Essentially, this shows also all of the hidden files, essentially all of the files that have a dot in the beginning or also folders with a dot in the beginning are hidden and not shown when simply typing LS. And with the LA, you can see those as well. Next is LT, which sorts the files by the date of modification. And we can also see the file size in a human readable format. Now, besides changing directories and displaying the contents of directories, what you'll probably also use pretty much on a daily basis is to move and copy files. Now, by default on Linux, you won't be alerted if you are copying a file over another file that already exists or also if you're moving it. And in that case, what actually happens is that you're removing an old file that you might still need. So let's assume we want to move this Nextcloud file into the test directory, but the Nextcloud file already exists within the Nextcloud directory. So if we do this now, if we copy Nextcloud to test, oh, actually, we need to source it first. Always source your bash RC first. But if we now uh, copy the Nextcloud file into test, it will actually ask us if we want to overwrite the file that is already existing. And now, of course, if you don't want to do it, we can just press Control C. Whilst we're on the topic of copying, we move on to tip number six, which is better copying. So essentially what this command does is it provides you a little bit more information while copying files, what's actually going on. And this command you'll also use very often while actually copying files from one remote server to another. So as an example, let's move this one gigabyte test file into the temp directory. We can just use CPV, the file name, the final destination. Usually this will be a remote location. And as you can see, we can now see the progress. We see how far into copying it was and also how fast the copying actually progressed. Tip number seven is to define frequently used commands as your own personal aliases. So in my case, this is just a few that I think are very useful and that I personally am using on a day by day basis. So the first one is essentially to modify the bash RC file. Next, I have an alias for updating my system. The third update alias is to actually update my Let's Encrypt certificates. You need to add your domain name and then you can just rerun this every three months without actually having to uh, remember this whole command. Another one that you probably want to use is a SSH command to any of your other servers. So SSH and then the port with your username and then the IP address of your server. Instead of actually typing this every time you connect to your server, just add an alias and that's it. 
The next one here is actually one that I probably also use pretty much on a daily basis. So say you wanna just know the number of files in this directory, you can just type count and you will see the number of files in this directory without actually having to do the ls star pipe wcl, which I actually have typed probably 10,000 times already in my life. Suno is a shorthand for sudo nano, and for any configuration files that you need to modify as the root user, you can just type sudo followed by the name of the file, ta-da, and you can edit the file. And if I do n bash rc, we can edit the bash rc file, but I can do it even quicker by just typing bash rc, and then finally to clear the terminal. So you can see this here in action, I have now all of these um, outputs here from installing all of the updates. And now I can simply press C and all of the output is cleared. Tip number eight is to add a function into your bash RC file that is able to find a string in all of the files in the current directory. Now, actually I have Googled how to do this probably about a thousand times. So it's definitely high time to actually put this into my bash RC because I have looked this up way too often. And essentially what it does is if we source the uh, bash RC file once again, we can now find files or rather strings in files. So say we have a file called test.txt and let's see, we wanna look for reminiscent. Now we can just do F string followed by the string that we want to look for. And as you can see, it will, well, first of all, it will tell us that we don't have permissions within these directories, but that's not so important. But first and foremost, it will actually show us the file and the line number where the word highlighted in red is found within. Tip number nine is to actually add a function to execute the command that is following the function or the previously executed um, command using sudo. Now, this is very convenient because more often than not, you are going into some subdirectory and then you wanna execute something, maybe it's a very long command and you press enter and it tells you, ah, sorry, you need sudo writes in order to execute this uh, command. So as an example here, obviously I can only update my repositories using sudo. So instead of actually retyping all of this, I just press S and it will execute the previously executed command using sudo. And finally, last but definitely not least on my list of the top 10 bash RC modifications that you absolutely need to do in order to become efficient with Linux is to have an extraction function. Now, there are many different types of archives that use different uh, formats to extract them and different flags that you need to use and you need to memorize them. What was it for gz.tar? How was, how was it for, for exit or bzip? It's basically useless to actually memorize all of these different options to extract archives. Instead, just have an extraction function, such as the one that I'm using here. It's essentially uh, from this um, GitHub page here um, from xvoland uh, with his very nice extract function. And essentially what this does is it allows you to extract any file regardless of its extension by simply typing extract followed by the file name. And that about wraps it up in terms of my personal favorite, top 10 uh, commands for the bash RC file. Now, if you guys know of any other very convenient and useful bash RC um, commands, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you still have any questions, then don't hesitate to leave them down below. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.